Hello! In this set of videos, we're going to start talking about predicate logic. In practice, the things we've covered up until now, meaning propositional logic and sets, was really building towards this. We're going to start trying to use the proper language of mathematics to describe things. So we're going to start by defining what we are going to use, then we're going to do lots and lots and lots of examples of seeing how to write sentences, both mathematical and English sentences, using this notation. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a predicate which is just a proposition where a variable appears. So this can be things like x is greater than 4. It could be things like x plus y is a real number. It could be sentences like a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n. So they can range from uh, English and math to math to... They could even have just English in them. We'll see more examples of this later, but for now, this is what we're going to talk about, is sentences that involve variables. We can write these similar to the notation we used before. You might call this p of x. To say it's a predicate p that depends upon some variable x, just like you might write down a function. Similarly, the next one we might write as q of x comma y. The one after that, maybe it has, sorry, maybe it has three variables. And then we can also write the n as the fourth thing. So you can have any number of variables for these. The problem is we don't know what we're talking about. X is a variable, but we don't know what type of variable it is. So we want to try to have some way of discussing what allowable things am I talking about with a predicated statement. The, the language we're going to use for that is going to be something called a universe of discourse. That's going to limit the range of values that we have. So maybe for this first statement, we're referring to natural numbers. And the second one we're referring to real numbers. And the one after that, we're referring to integers or some other variable type that we're talking about. So we can limit that with what we call a universe of discourse. And this is something you tell the reader ahead of time and say, this is the where everything we're going to talk about comes from. This might be every single set, every single number, or something uh, more nebulous than that, all of the people, or something like this. Next, a lot of these statements aren't helpful as written. You want to talk about not just a variable, but how many of a variable. This is the way most math statements are written. There are things of the form... Every single thing of type A is also of type B. Let me write down what I said. All things of type A are also, sorry, also of type, type B. So this is what a lot of math statements are. Or you might say an equation has a solution or something exists that you could solve something. So this is one type of math statement. Another one is that solutions exist to certain problems. So for example, you can solve any quadratic equation as long as you allow complex numbers and it has two roots. So there you could argue, you could write down in ma in this language, that's what we're going to try to capture, is things like every quadratic equation has two solutions, things like that. So there's two things we're going to add, which are called quantifiers. And these are going to be able to identify those two things. We're going to want to talk about every single thing and there being one thing. So our first thing is called the universal quantifier. It's going to say every single thing of type X is satisfying the statement. So this might be that every natural number number is greater than or equal to zero. We could write that as something like this. For all n in the natural numbers, n is greater than or equal to zero. You say for everything of a certain type, in this case our type being natural number, it satisfies some mathematical statement. This is saying every single thing. Alternatively, you might want to say there's just one, that something exists. So, you might want to say, for example, there is a solution to 4x plus 9 equals 12. 
To write something like this, you would write, there exists an X. We'll hold for a second. Such that 4X plus 9 equals 12. You could argue where this is coming from. If you solve that equation, you would be, would be able to identify that the answer is a rational number. So maybe we'd say there exists an X in the rational numbers that solves that equation. Notice that that original statement is actually inherently vague. This happens a lot with English, where you can't uniquely identify a way to translate it into nice mathematical language. So we're going to try to make an effort in this class of writing down our math in a way that is unique, and so we can actually understand what are we doing at any given step. And with these two symbols, it turns out you can write down pretty much any mathematical statement you'd ever need. The only other things you might say are things like maybe there is no solution. But really, in practice, this covers effectively all types of mathematical statements we'll need to say in this class, and likely in any class that you'll do in the future. So these are the two main quantifiers. I don't really know of any other ones that you'll see, but you theoretically could have other quantifiers. For example, you could have a quantifier that says there exists five solutions. I don't know why you might need that, but you could define that on your own if you so wanted.